नमस्कार आपका हार्दिक स्वागत है हमारे इस विशेष कार्यक्रम में जिसमें आज हमारे साथ एक खास मेहमान है इनसे आपका परिचय कराने से पहले इतना आपको बता दें कि इनका संबंध चिकित्सा की दुनिया में है ही इज अ रिनाउंड इम्यूनोलॉजिस्ट इन्होंने अपनी पढ़ाई की थी एट दी ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेज देश की राजधानी में जो है और जिसे विश्व के जितने मेडिकल स्कूल्स हैं उनमें से शायद सबसे बेहतरीन माना जाता है ये आप जानते हैं कुछ बीमारियाँ जिनके नाम आपने सुने हैं सच एज एड्स जिसे ह्यूमन इम्यूनो डिफिशेंसी वायरस का नाम भी कुछ लोग देते हैं बिफोर इट बिकम्स फुल ब्लोन एड्स शायद हमारी इस धरती पर एड्स सौ साल से ज़्यादा है लेकिन तीस साल हुए हैं लगभग दैट वी वर एबल टू क्वांटिफाइड एज एड्स उस समय जो बड़ी बड़ी फार्मास्यूटिकल कंपनीज थी वो लगभग दस लाख रुपए एक साल के लेती थी फॉर ट्रीटमेंट विद एंटी रेट्रोवायरल ड्रग्स गर्व की बात यह है दैट एन इंडियन कंपनी फाइनली ब्रॉट द प्राइस डाउन टू टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी डॉलर शायद दस हजार रुपए से कम कीमत में उन्होंने एंटी रेट्रोवायरल ड्रग्स बेचने शुरू किए हमें यह भी याद है कि भारत को और इस कंपनी को वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के सामने ले जाया गया इसका विरोध हुआ बहुत से लोगों ने कहा कि हमने इतना पैसा खर्च किया बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियों ने अनुसंधान में रिसर्च में बट अल्टीमेटली द कंट्रीज इन अफ्रीका डिक्लेयर ए नेशनल मेडिकल इमरजेंसी और भारत की इस कंपनी ने करोड़ों लोगों की जान बचाई हु वर एबल टू गेट एंटी रेट्रोवायरल ड्रग्स ट्रीटमेंट टूडे we are delighted that another outstanding son of india is working to create vaccines for intractable diseases dr sudhir paul thank you for joining us on the world's best network india's <laughs> national network doordarshan uh you are professor and director of chemical immunology research center department of uh, pathology and uh, uh, laboratory medicine at the university of texas in the united states well first welcome what brings you to india thank you for having me here and it's it's a honor for me to be thank you to be back in india visiting you and uh, my parents which has brought me to india this time that my parents are uh, 85 and 89 may they live for many many years uh, more thank you thank you and they draw me to india almost every year so that was the central purpose but i am doing some scientific work also with collaborators during the visit Dr. Paul, now forgive me, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. But ये जो शब्द है ना जो हम term use करते हैं virus, बहुत डर लगता है इससे क्यों? Virus um, uh, is um, um, an agent that we should not really be scared of. It is inevitable कि हम virus और humans एक साथ coexist करें. कुछ viruses बहुत ज़्यादा virulent हो जाते हैं and they start killing. but if you look at the history of viruses they are self contained our immune system counters viruses and uh, the virulence of viruses decreases in fact there are data that this is exactly what is happening to hiv that its virulence is decreasing and hiv and humans are learning to sort of uh, coexist now having said that this is not to minimize the 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 problem the problem is enormous there are in india uh 250,000 deaths per year uh, because of because the those anti retroviral drugs jo aapne mention kiya they are only partially available yeah. so we we do need to deal with the virus in an aggressive way iska matlab hai when you say aggressive way ki vaccine banai jaye taaki we can be protected bilkul ye jo art anti retroviral therapy it is still quite expensive 250 dollar 300 dollar और उसके बाद जब रेजिस्टेंस डेवलप हो जाती है पहले लेयर पहला फर्स्ट लाइन आर्ट पे तो वी रियली डोंट हैव द मनी टू गो विद सेकंड लाइन एंड थर्ड लाइन एंड द वायरस बिकम्स रेजिस्टेंट सो वी नीड अ वैक्सीन वेरी अर्जेंटली पर्टिकुलरली फॉर द इमर्जिंग कंट्रीज लाइक इंडिया डॉक्टर पॉल जब हम लोग स्कूल में थे तो एक अंग्रेजी की मिसाल हमें दिया करते थे दैट प्रिवेंशन इज बेटर देन क्योर लेकिन जो बड़ी बड़ी फार्मास्यूटिकल कंपनीज हैं दे बिलीव दैट क्योर इज मोर प्रॉफिटेबल देन प्रिवेंशन डू यू एग्री यस बट दिस इज अ फंडामेंटल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन कैपिटलिज्म एंड एंड सोसाइटी दैट मनी विल ड्राइव द बिग कंपनीज एंड द अल्टरनेटिव द अल्टरनेटिव वाज कम्युनिज्म बट दैट इज गॉन नाउ सो वी कैन हैव अ 
a sort of a mixed. So there, there are uh, philosophers of science who say, yes, there is a selfish gene that humans have, but there is also an altruistic gene. And I think governments in many parts of the world are really recognizing that the two have to be, they have to coexist. We need to give motivation uh, to the companies and then we need to impose order. And it is a national emergency, as you said, to deal with these matters. Um, I can see that the altruistic gene in Dr. Sudhir Paul is much more uh, prominent <laughs> than the other one, which is selfish. Dr. Paul, why did you choose immunology as a career? So by training, I'm a biochemist, uh, but uh, we moved into immunology because uh, the immune cells, our cells that defend against uh, microbes, viruses, bacteria, remember that while we defend against these microbes, viruses, bacteria, uh, we also must maintain self-tolerance or else the immune system, when it turns against the self, then we get autoimmune disease. So the immune system is essential for our survival and, and we saw ways in which we could make contributions. We made some discoveries pertinent to these matters that I'm discussing and we felt that this is where we should uh, find out what exactly is going on. So what drives me is really curiosity. In the first instance, that is why I became an immunologist. Now, Dr. Sudhir Paul was born in Kenya in East Africa migrated to India with his parents and uh, after finishing school joined perhaps the world's most prestigious institute of medical science at the All India Institute. But there people go and, and look for, if I may use the word, more glamorous careers like surgery, neurosurgery, neurology, cardiology. Why immunology? When I was just out of um, my pre-university in Aurangabad, I uh, was selected as a science talent scholar by the NCERT and uh, they gave me money. They, they essentially subsidized my life for, for about 10 years, I believe. So I got, so the, the fact that I was selected for this in itself was sort of vindication. It, was, it, it reinforced my desire to become a scientist. And uh, so this is really, a, I am a product of Indian largesse, Indian uh, desire to have uh, homegrown scientists and and uh, people who excel and can be with can work at the best of institutions. Ab, jo aapne kaha, India's desire to have homegrown indigenous scientists who can compete with the best in the world, which is what you are doing, if I may say so, you are better than the best. Um, why did you leave India? Th that is a thorny for me. I, I, there, there have been <laughs> conflicts in my own mind. Why did I leave uh, India? And really, I saw that I was uh, trained for science at AIMS, and I decided that I can contribute more to, to, to science and to society doing that. And my really, my only other choice was I was very frustrated with social injustice. In the, this was in the 70s now. And my other choice was to become a revolutionary. And I actually said in my farewell party at AIMS, look, I have only two choices. And I choose, I had, I had two children, uh, very young. So I decided to, to contribute through what I was trained to do. And I decided that I'll, I'll get, I'll have an opportunity uh, to do more. And then once I moved abroad, I quickly started getting funding uh, for the research. And that kept me there. The funding, what drives scientists like me is the funding. If I have to struggle for funding enormously, it gets, gets tough. In the old days, we, scientists used to go to kings and queens. But now at least we have, a, we have a peer review system where there's a merit-based award of funding. Um, Dr. Paul, a moment ago you mentioned that you might have become a revolutionary, but you are doing revolutionary stuff in medicine, so we are delighted Thank that you. you've combined the two Thank streaks you. in you. Now, intractable diseases, wo bimariya jin ke liye asani se hum log cure nahi dhoon sakte, ilaj nahi dhoon sakte. Why does that interest you? I was following my nose, and it happened serendipitously. I sort of stumbled upon it, and then yes, we were prepared to see when we got something new, uh, we recognize that this is important. The technology that we have developed is outside the scope 
of conventional uh, immunology and uh, conventional medical approaches. So we think that uh, we can tackle uh, intractable diseases like HIV, Alzheimer's disease, old age diseases where the heart uh, has amyloid in it. Uh, we think that this is a new generation of vaccines and what we call catalytic antibodies or catabodies that can do things that other types of medicines cannot. So that's what took me in the direction. Now, in the course of your work, your research, your study, do you see new viruses emerging? And if you do, what creates a virus? Yeah, new viruses are emerging uh, constantly. Humans and viruses, they really have co-evolved over, over 500 million years that the immune system has been around. Uh, the immune system would not, uh, without the immune system, we wouldn't have been around. So we must defend ourselves against these viruses that are constantly emerging uh, and bacteria that are constantly emerging. Um, what makes them emerge is that they mutate. They want to survive just as you or I want to survive. There is a force in nature that uh, survival, as Darwin said, survival of the, of the fittest. So they are becoming fitter and fitter and we must keep up with them. Let me press this point mm. a little bit. That gentleman or that lady up there who determines our lives, does he or she have a department of uh, virus uh, production? Um, I am uh, <laughs> sort of tempted to <laughs> say uh, that uh, regardless of whether you are an atheist or uh, you believe in uh, God and think that there's predetermination and department of genetics, department of virology, uh, regardless of that, the facts are that in the here and now, we must uh, deal with the way things happen, very much what you are asking me, how did viruses come about? That's what scientists like to find out and then we develop medicines. Again, science is a problem solving enterprise. Different scientists have different philosophies. Some are deeply religious, others are uh, randomists if you will, they believe in random chance. We happen to be at the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time. So it depends. Uh, so, so there is that conflict which will go on in the minds of lay people and scientists. You are working on finding vaccines to prevent pretty serious, severe diseases. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, what about uh, dealing with old age? It doesn't affect me, I'm still young, but I'm just wondering if you have a vaccine against old age? So this one is not a vaccine. A vaccine would be probably dangerous. Vaccines are usually given when we are babies so that we can prevent, as you said, it's better than a cure. Um, this one is a catalytic antibody. What we discovered um, is that uh, there are antibodies that can recognize a target. These are molecule targets that cause aging. And th there are antibodies that we discovered that go and bind to the target and then they start chopping up, they start breaking up the, the target. Now this is important because uh, classical immunology says the antibodies, the immune system works only by binding, whereas we discovered these catalytic antibodies, they are like what we say in the US is the energizer bunny, a catalyst cuts, then it goes on to cut another, goes on to cut another. So a very small amount of this catalytic antibody can achieve what conventional antibodies, you need a thousand fold more of the, catal of the regular antibody to achieve the same goal of removing these bad molecules. So these are catalytic antibodies against aging targets. So I might